Today on What It's Like, 1949 Hudson Commodore Series 492 Club Coupe, which is currently for sale at the Classic Auto Mall in Morgantown, Pennsylvania. If you've never been here, let me tell you, this place is absolutely amazing. I was there all day yesterday, and it was like I died and went to heaven. They don't charge a mission. It's a consignment dealer. It's actually the largest consignment dealer in the Northeast with over 800 cars for sale at the time of taping this video. But before getting into this absolutely gorgeous Hudson, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars off the beaten path. This channel, we cover the specs, period correct ads, and show the cars for what they are. It is so much more than just walking around a car with music. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Let's talk 1949 Hudson line. But wait, wait, wait. Before we talk about that, let's talk about Hudson, the brand, the company. Hudson Motor Car Company was founded in 1909, and they produced cars until 1954 as an independent car manufacturer. 1954 came Hudson and Matt Nash, yes, Mash, Nash merged to form American Motors Corporation. Both Nash and Hudson names were used until 1957 when they were retired. Side note, Chrysler. No, wait, Daimler Chrysler. No, that's not it either. Fiat Chrysler. No, that's not it either. Stellinus, 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 to my knowledge, owns the right to the names. So if they ever wanted to revive names like the Hornet or the Wasp, which they should totally do because that would be totally cool. Anyway, 1949 Hudson model lineup. This was broken down into two model lines and they were available with both six-cylinder and eight-cylinder engines. Super was the basement model. Commodore was the better equipped model. Hudson produced the Commodore from 1941 to 1942. And then a thing called World War II happened, and they had to stop production. But production continued from 1946 to 1952. Commodore was the largest and most luxury model Hudson ever built. It was built in three generations. 1949 falls in the third generation, which had a production run from 1948 to 1952. Hudson, being a small, independent car manufacturer, gave it a bit of an advantage, and they were able to make a brand new car for the 1948 model year, whereas Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, they kind of just blew off the dust off the pre-war dies until sales figures plummeted. Not only was Hudson able to build a brand new shell for a car, but they were also able to build a whole new way of constructing these cars. They were mono-built construction, and they coined the term Step Down, and it was designed by Frank Spring. Hudson cars used a light but strong semi-unit body with a perimeter frame. Passengers would literally step down when getting into a Hudson. This design was twofold. It was thought to be safer because the chassis was around the passengers rather than the passengers sitting on top of the chassis. And it provided a lower center of gravity, which was one of the reasons the later Hornet was so well received for stock car racing. For 1949, the Hudson Commodore used essentially the same body style that it used in 48. They are literally identical. But with that said, it could be had as a four-door sedan, two-door Brougham convertible, two-door Club Coupe, Commodore standard features. These would be options on the Super, Commodore steering wheel, directional signals, clock, foam rubber seat cushions for front and back, front bumper guards, fender ornaments, large hubcaps, rear window moldings, options. Now these are some options. We're not gonna get into all of the options. Chrome trim rings, leather trim options, radio, weather control heater, weather master heater, white wall tires. Let's talk specs. It's important to note that both the Super and the Commodore used the same everything. The Commodore was just the better appointed car. So these specs could go for both, except for the price. And the Super came in more body styles. 207.5 inches long. It's 77 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 124 inches. It weighs 3,785 pounds. Price $2,359, which is equivalent to you spending $29,500. $38.25 in the year 2022. To look at it a different way, it's, it equates out to be $1.60 per pound, which is equivalent to $20.03 per pound in the year 2022. Total, 1949 Hudson production was 159,100 units. Total Commodore six-cylinder production was 61,402 units. Club Coupe and four-passenger sedan was 32,059 units. I wasn't able to find a figure that separated the Club Coupe and the four-door sedan. 
I was able to find a figure for the convertibles. The convertibles are super rare. 656 convertibles were made in the six-cylinder form. It's pretty even. So that's why that this number doesn't total up to 159,000 because we left out the eight-cylinder models for whenever we cover the eight-cylinder model in the future. Talking about past, present, and future, please hit that like button, especially if you dig this channel because it helps more people see this video in the future. Let's talk engines. Starting with the base engine, 262 cubic inch displacement, flathead six. It's good for 121 horsepower at 4,000 RPM, 200 pound-feet of torque at 1,600 RPM. When mated to the three-speed manual, the only transmission on offer, zero to 60 could be had in 16 and a half seconds. Average fuel consumption is 16 and a half miles to the gallon. Theoretical top speed is 87 miles per hour. Moving up to the straight eight. So this is where things get interesting. The eight is smaller in displacement than the six, and the six only makes seven horsepower less than the eight. 254 cubic inch displacement, straight eight. It's good for 128 horsepower at 4,200 RPM, 198 pound-feet of torque at 1,600 RPM. When mated to the three-speed manual, zero to 60 could be had in 16.2 seconds. Average Fuel economy is 13.9 miles to the gallon and theoretical top speed is 100 miles per hour. Moving on to engine accessories. Each engine could have an aluminum cylinder head for an added cost. Vacuum motive drive. Drive master included vacuum motive drive for an added cost. Oil bath air cleaner. Upon further digging, I did find that overdrive manual transmission was an option. Let's talk styling. Just wow. Look at all of these lines and the way that the sheet metal is just all ever so sculpted like if you move just a, even a wee bit you can start seeing different lines that you can't see if you're looking straight on i absolutely love how this comes down tapers down down here and it gets wider as it comes down and it just kind of pushes all this mass up into this bulge also notice these lines and it doesn't even start here, but this is where we're going to start for now. And then we'll come back to it. But notice how it comes around, comes in towards the center. And then down to this emblem. So just check it all out. Like it just, it's the line that just keeps on going. And then it comes down here and then goes back to the fender. This car is absolutely gorgeous. But this line doesn't really start here. It actually, it doesn't really end. It comes back around here. Look at the way this roof is designed. As well as this. I love how they two-tone this. Just, I love this shape. Slab styling. Look at that nice Hudson badge. Here's the gas. Notice it's not square. It almost looks like a little sail. It's really cool. I love the taillight design. It's very indicative of like a 1939 Ford headlight design, but instead of it, it almost looks like a shield because it comes to a little bit of a point right here. While we're back here, let's get into the trunk. Look at how massive this trunk is. Bumper jack, there's tire irons, full-size spare, bias ply spare there. This looks like an aftermarket light feature, but it could be a ship installed option. So look, this one's got dual mirrors as well. Got a mirror down here. It's got the spotlight, which also doubles as a mirror visor. Check out the antenna placement. I absolutely love that. I think that's one of the best places that the antenna could possibly be. Cow hood vent. Just check out how big that cow hood vent is. Notice the windshield, it comes to a point right there. Getting inside, check out how this door 
handle is designed. Push button here. The door has some heft to it. This is nothing like I would have thought this door panel to be. Check out how wide it opens. It opens up 90 degrees. There is a lot going on. Notice it's all trimmed out. This looks like a simulated wood. It could possibly be real wood, but it feels sort of simulated. This feels like vinyl. Notice it's all two-toned. Notice the bright work here. Ashtray inside the panel. Door handle to get out. Window crank for the big window. And just check out how big this window is. It's huge. Armrest as well as door handle to pull the door shut. And it's, it's nice that you could actually grab onto it. Vent window up here. And that's how that operates. I just want to give you a better look at this. I've never seen a door panel like this. So notice it's tapered. It gets wider as it goes down here. Notice this part here and how it sticks out as opposed to over here. It doesn't stick out nearly as much over here because once again, it's tapered. And I absolutely adore this, how this is all designed. This controls the spotlight. Coming down inside the pedal box, hand brake, high beam switch, clutch pedal, brake pedal, gas pedal. So notice how this, how far this goes down because this is called Hudson's step down design. Notice how it kind of sits down further than the actual sides of the car. Hudson, take a look at this interior. Notice the hood release is also underneath here. Pop that. So just want to show you how this hinge situation looks. Look at these big, beefy hinges. Also check out how this piece here, it almost looks like the dashboard wraps around. I don't know if that's real wood or not. It's gonna bother me. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person looks like. Here's what under the steering wheel situation looks like. I wear size 34 pants. So if you are about the same size as me, if I move my legs a little bit, there's way more room. So you'll fit in this car no problem at all. This car feels huge because it is huge. Just take a look around. That is what the rear window looks like from the front. These seats are so comfortable. I don't know how to describe it. These are one of the most comfortable 50 seats that I've ever been in. This is what I look like behind the wheel of the 49 Hudson. Tons, tons of headroom. There's enough space to fit three across here. No issue at all. Like I can't even, I can't touch the other side. That's how wide it is. This car is very big, very wide. It feels like it would be a very comfortable ride. On to the button switches and knobs starting in the center of the dash, but on the left-hand side, speedometer with odometer inside of it, fuel and temperature, which are gauges, but they are flanked on both sides by two red lights. The red light that's on the left-hand side is for the oil pressure. The light on the right-hand side is for the amp gauge. So if it throws a belt or the generator has an issue, that light will come on. This has a Hudson radio. Clock, lights, and wiper are located just below the Hudson radio. At the bottom of the dash, that's where the heater is mounted, and it's mounted at the center at the bottom of the dash. And then all the way on the left-hand side is the starter button. Up above, sun visors. And just notice how that is. Look, it's hinged in the center. How cool is that? Over here, dome white, and that turns it on and off. This is the uh, rear view mirror, sun visor for your passenger. There isn't a dome light in the center. It is over here is the dome light. Getting in the rear seat, just fold the seat forward like that. 
and that's how much room you have to get back there. There's adequate knee space. You got to remember, I'm a six foot two full size 2022 adult. And this is more or less for kids. I just like showing that if you go to the car show in your Hudson Commodore, you could take some people home with you if you'd like. Tons of headroom back here. Doesn't feel claustrophobic in this car. It actually feels very spacious. It's just when you look through the windshield there, it feels a lot like a 50 Mercury. It feels like you're sitting in a tubbed car. It feels like the sides, it almost feels like you're sitting in a bathtub with windows. That's kind of sort of how it feels. It's not bad. I'm not saying that it's bad. It's just, it's different. Because if you look around all of the windows, they're very, they're very short, except for the rear window. The rear windshield's huge. And the front windshield, it's kind of oval. Like, look how it peaks up there towards the center and then it comes down on both sides. It's very interesting. Creature comforts in the back back here. There aren't any coat hooks on the driver's side nor the passenger side. There is a nice grab handle for, but it's only on the passenger side. There isn't one over here. And I'm sure you could have got one for over here, but they chose not to. They must've liked to sit over on this side as opposed to sitting on this side. But regardless, there are, there is an armrest and it's designed just like the armrest up there, but there's nowhere for you to pull the door shut because there's is a fixed wall. Ashtray. So this car has got four ashtrays because it's got an ashtray over here as well. And that's what that looks like. And that's what the armrest looks like. There isn't a center armrest check out the seat profile it's very comfortable it looks like it's upright but it actually it's more in here and then it bulges out here and then it goes back the seat cushion itself it dips down a little bit back here but it levels out it feels very comfortable back here it's one of the most comfortable um independent car seats that i've been in like this this is weird but this car has better seats than the Ford, than the Chevy, than any of the, you know, the premium, the, the big three. It just it feels right. It feels nice. It feels spacious in here. So this is, these ropes are for lap blankets, but you could hold on to it if you wanted to hold on to it, but you more or less put like a lap blanket on here so you didn't get cold because the heater is up here underneath. Do you see it? That's your heat situation. It blows down at your feet, so it might get colder back here. Bottom, you're sitting back here and it was super cold. It might get a little bit, it, it might still be cold back here. These windows do go down and this is how they operate. Oh man, look at that. They go all the way down. Who knew? That's really cool. I love the way that these windows are designed. They're all kind of sort of dished in. See how that sort of dishes in? There's even like wood accents on the knob for the window crank. Coming to the under the hood section, we already popped the hood from inside. There is a catch. It is right. There's a catch. It's right here. Pick up on that. Hood is pretty heavy. Notice where the springs are. That's interesting. Like they're in the center. Check out this engine. Flathead six. That appears to be a six volt battery. Horn is back here. Generator. Check out where the starter position is. That's interesting. You could probably change the starter from on top instead of underneath. Because it doesn't look like you'd have access to get to it underneath. Interesting. Check out all of these wires. Very 
Very interesting. We put a overflow washer fluid, but it's actually for the radiator because if you look, it goes into the radiator itself. On to the pros and cons. I'm getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars. Blue Chip Auto Investment, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. On the positive side, as for the 1948 through 49 Super 6, against it, as for the 1948 through 49 Super 6, but somewhat heavier, so performance is poorer. All right, so we got to go back to the Super 6 Hudson from 1948 through 49. On the positive side, it says design merit excellent roadability solid construction against it very few one of the greats all right now it's time for name that tune first person to give me the correct name of the band as well as song title will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section Thank you so much for coming out and watching this. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. The other way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. There's no obligation to join, but if you'd like to showcase your rides and tell your stories about your cars, go check it out. The link will be in the description. So if I catch you on here or Facebook, just know that I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodaloo!